So I want to tell you guys this. If you're new here, hi, my name is May. I'm obsessed with brown. Hi guys, welcome back. Today is all about the viral latte makeup look. So I know, and you know, this makeup look is nothing new. With new social media and a younger generation, they're going to discover things and call a new name. This is my interpretation of the viral latte look. Sultry, a little lived in, a bit smudgy, bronzy, but not coppery, not warm tone, no terracottas. We're just dealing with brownie shades, bronzy shades, some shimmer, some mattes. If you want to see how I achieve this viral look using only drugstore makeup, continue watching. Today we're trying a mix of new drugstore releases and some oldies and goodies products that I've talked about before you guys love my drugstore video so I really want to dedicate this to all drugstore products going in with one of my favorite elf primers now this is their new liquid poreless putty primer they had the cream one Do they have anything else just the cream and then also it's the cream regular and then they have one for acne and I think they have another one but I really want to try this one out in front of you guys I may like this packaging better because every time it was in that little jar i kept getting it in my fingernail and i have sh pretty short nails i don't wear any acrylics i like to keep it pretty natural but typically i prefer anything on a squeezy tube so let's do that first oh wow it came out immediately i would say it's more on the runny side it's runny but it has substance to it so it's a bit thicker so let's focus on the t-zone so far it's blending very nicely and honestly once it's on the skin it looks and it feels the same all right so far i'm liking this primer keep in mind this is my interpretation of latte makeup when i think of latte makeup some people have said like ice latte makeup i gotta say i don't drink coffee i don't even think i've ever had a latte i'm just like not into those types of drinks uh, mainly because i don't like the taste or the smell of coffee and also caffeine just doesn't really work on me so to me it's kind of like what's the point as far as like complexion it seems very lightweight and i want this look to be appropriate for the summer. So I would like this to be sweat proof. I want this to be luminous. I want this to obviously be bronzy. I've also noticed the eyes. It's not so coppery. So it's not as warm as we're thinking. It's more of your different brown tones, bronzy tones, but staying away from copper terracottas which are colors I love so much. I want to challenge myself and steer away from those shades. So as far as the complexion, I'm going in with this new product that just released. This is the Maybelline Superstay 24-Hour Skin Tint. I think some sort of skin tint serum foundation is a really great complexion product for this makeup trend. So I got two shades. I could not tell. If you have a warmer undertone, you're going to be struggling. So I ended up getting... 120 and 129 so they're, they're the ones right next to each other 120 is a bit lighter 129 when i was looking on the website it looked really promising because they used an asian model and usually if there's an asian model i'm kind of like okay that's most likely me but you open this do you see how dark that is now you know compared to my shoulders it's good this looks really dark i might do maybe a drop of this but this to me seems too dark again we'll see we're gonna actually swatch both so let's start off with 120 oh no but now 120 looks really light i do think i am a mix of 120 and 129 all right so these are the two shades so if i were to kind of just blend them a little more okay so there we go for my hand i'm 120 and then for like the rest of the mind body where it gets a little more sun i'm probably 129 i really think i am a mix of both of them just to show you on my actual face here is 120 129 see how i'm not either i'm like right in the middle so if you are like media with warmer golden undertones you're gonna struggle and i think you're gonna have to mix both of these because I think 120 would have been a better fit for like fall and winter. So I'm going to mix the two together. Let's see how that looks better. I'm going to use more of 120 and less of 129. So I think that's a better match. So let's do one side of the face just to see the coverage since this is new to me. It had really great reviews. It feels nice. Very lightweight. Doesn't feel heavy. It's interesting because in the bottle it has this um, sheen to it. Like it has this glow. But on the skin it actually leans i would say more natural looking 
which I prefer. My preference is always more, um, more like a satin finish. But see, just using my fingers, you don't see any streaks or anything. I have some redness on my nose. Let's see if that has enough coverage to cover it up. It doesn't cover it all, but it does have decent coverage. I would say like light to medium coverage. Okay, then going in with my e.l.f. sponge. I just cleaned it. Just gonna add some down the neck. And just blend everything else out. This is pretty. You do see that luminousness, but when you're, I don't know, seeing me in person, it doesn't look as luminous. As far as the skin tint, I'm really enjoying it. This to me is like perfect for the summer. It does dry down where it's touchable, so it's not super tacky. Uh, maybe if you like dry skin and you don't like to set your makeup or just use any powder. I'm really enjoying this coverage. Even the hyperpigmentation that I'm dealing with, a little bit here. My worst one was like right over here. It actually covered it pretty well. Since this look is a bit sultry, smudgy, kind of a little more blown out, I do want to make sure I have longevity and I'm using cream shadows. So I'm gonna go in with my favorite eyeshadow primer from Ulta Beauty. I would love to test out maybe the best eyeshadow primers, drugstore, and maybe like a high-end version. I think that would be great. I prefer something matte like this. And then I'm also gonna put it under the eyes. I don't always do this, but since I'm doing more um, shadow under the eyes, I don't do that very often. And I might be going all the way under. Sometimes I kind of just do it halfway, kind of still trying to figure that out in my head. I'm just gonna add more primer here just to help with that longevity. Even though I just tried two new products, so far they look so good and even together it looks like they're doing well so i'm gonna go in next with an oldie but goodie i've been talking about this quite a bit physician's formula the butter glow concealer i'm using light under the eyes just a little bit i don't like to go too much in the summertime i forgot how big this sponge gets when you wet it i think i like the other one as far as like size wise a little more this gets so big i'm gonna do a little bit of contouring it's not super sculpted so i do want to keep it pretty minimal so i'm gonna go in with the elf halo glow beauty wand this one is in light medium this one isn't very dark so it's not gonna look too strong on me ah uh, should i add a tiny bit on the nose maybe just a little sometimes when you add contour and bronzer it could feel quite heavy, but these beauty wand products don't at all. You want, I forgot to add a little bit right here under the chin. Then a little bit of the nose contour. Just do something pretty soft. Okay, I'm just keeping it soft, but still giving some definition. This product has been in my Ulta cart for so long. I've been dying to try it out. I've heard quite a few YouTubers talk about this product. It's the Makeup Revolution Cream Bronzer. That only comes in two shades. I have the lighter one. For someone like me, again, a light medium, I could go either way, but the other shade that's darker, it might have been a little too dark. Even though this is super creamy, it's very blendable. I've already kind of like tested it out and like swatched it because I got really excited. It's quite sheer and I like that. So I'm gonna go up higher. This is where I like to put bronzer. So pretty. No wonder Kelly loves this product. She always talks about this. What is Kelly's last name? I can't remember. I feel like I don't look at people's last names as far as like YouTubers. Like you never hear me say my last name. There's no reason why. I think, I don't know. I just always called May, not May Sittler, not Miss Sittler. Like I prefer to be called just May because it's just, I don't know, a little more casual, a little more friendly. Anywho, I can't remember Kelly's last name, but she's always have talked about this product for years. And I finally got it. And I'm loving it. And she's absolutely right. She so have different skin types and also different skin tones. I want to say she's dry and she has a lighter complexion than me. But this is pretty. Look at that. My skin looks so glowy but not too glowy. Kind of has this just like seamless look to it. Nothing too strong or anything. I was considering in um, bringing my other bronzer that I really like, my Physician's Formula one that I've been obsessed with, but I've been using that so much in a, a lot of my videos, so I wanted to show you guys like something else. And I'm actually really um, happy with this, and this has no shimmer or anything, so if you don't like that, I think you would enjoy this one. I'm already obsessed, but I kind of knew that already. This is most definitely going to be in my summer favorites. I'm kind of torn on what to do next. I I think I want to do the eyes before I get into powder just in case I have to clean some things up. I have quite a few products. You know what? Let's do brows next because I know what I'm using for that. So going in with the NYX The Brow Glue, I haven't used this in a minute. 
This is very goopy, but it works well. Has great longevity. I'm glad that the fluffier brows are still in. People are still doing it because I'm about it. But I don't make mine really that fluffy. I would say medium fluffness. Why did I stop using this product? It's so good and it takes just seconds to do it. I gotta use this more often. I know they have a tinted one for this. I just don't know if it's the right tint for my brows. My brows, it's kind of hard. So going in with the brows and filling them in since we're talking about it. So this elf product is new to me. I love the micro brow pencil, like the one that's really thin. I love that one, but I wanted to test out this one. This honestly almost could have been just an elf face. Full face of elf is basically what I'm trying to say because I have so many elf products that I'm talking about. But anywho, this one is the Instant Lift Brow Pencil in Neutral Brown. I made sure Neutral Brown, not... What's the other one? There's the one right next to it that I made that mistake where it's just a little too warm for me. So I know this one, the pencil is thicker. My guess is this is probably going to be more creamy. Let's see. Oh yeah, uh-huh. More creamy. More like a crayon. The tone is good. You definitely can't uh, create hair like strokes as well compared to the micro one. And you know what? I think because this is more of a crayon, I'm actually going to let my brows dry a little bit because they're still a little tacky and then I'll go back in with this. I did one side. I'm not the biggest fan of this. I find this to be too creamy. Like I think I prefer something a little more stiff. So when it's too soft, I tend to go a bit harder and then my brows end up looking a bit stronger than what I was hoping for. And it's also harder to get a thinner uh, like a brow tail. All right, I'm gonna stop there because I don't want it to go any further. Going in with the spoolie side. I'm back. I wasn't expecting to be gone for two hours. I just had to troubleshoot my Wi-Fi and that was just a hot mess. Anytime I have to deal with like tech and troubleshooting, I'm not saying that I'm not good with technology, but I'm also not saying that it doesn't stress me out because it absolutely stresses me out. <laughs> but we're all good. It's all resolved. So going back since you know now I've had my makeup for a few hours um, I just need to blend with some creases under the eyes So I just did the brows and I was saying that elf pencil. It's a little too soft for me I do like something a little bit more stiff and where you could create more uh, like brow hairs and then i'm just gonna soften the nose contour and blend it a little more using that same sponge let's see what should we do next i think we should move on to the eyes like i was saying i have a few products we can use i do want to talk about uh, what should i start with let's talk about this because this feels so fitting this is the elf bite size eyeshadow quad now this one says i love you a latte and i felt like that was very fitting so if you're into more of your mattes these are all mattes by the way you're gonna really enjoy this i talked about this in a previous elf video maybe best sellers i can't recall which video exactly but i have a different one so i picked up this one because i knew i was going to use it perfect for traveling i don't know if i I'm going to use this because I do want to talk about some cream shadow sticks and some other cream products that I want to use and I want to add a little more sultriness so that means I need to use products that are just a little more creamy and that are giving me that depth but if you prefer some matte eyeshadows and you wanted something that I recommend I would totally go for this one and also the name I love you a latte I couldn't help myself shadow sticks are such a hit or miss for me so the ones that I'm very familiar with are the elf no budge matte shadow stick and also the uh, metallic one these are so good i'm so glad that you guys told me to try them out again because when they first came out i don't remember them not creasing like they weren't this good and these are so good guys so we have the copper chic and i know i told you guys that i'm not leaning into the coppery tones like the penny color the warm tones but this one if i'm remembering correctly it's actually not that warm so that's what copper chic looks like i find this one to be more bronzy so i might be using this and then we have a matte this one is in cool beans so they have a few matte shades i was hoping that they had a lighter color brown they had something else but it looked a little more oops the sharpener fell out it looked a little more taupey and that's not really what i'm going for this is what cool bean looks like again really nice i'm going for again something sultry a little lived in a bit smudgy so i kind of want to start out with cool bean 
on the lash line. We're gonna do one eye at a time just in case it's not turning out that great. <laughs> and then I'm gonna immediately start blending it. You have to do this quickly and it's actually better to do one eye at a time. I'm just gonna slowly start building that. Again, I'm not going very high. I'm just staying right here, just blending out the edges. So I'm torn. I might use copper all over the lid. I do have this one, it's new to me. This is the Maybelline Color Tattoo 24 Hour Eye Stick. Now I think this is a bit lighter than the e.l.f. one. So I think I'll be using this more as like an inner corner. I just wanted to show you guys side by side the different colors that we'll be working with today. What's really pretty about this Maybelline one is that it has little specks of silver. So it gives you that wet looking effect versus the e.l.f. one. It's more just of a, like a shimmer. There's no little particles or anything. And I just wanted this makeup look to be really easy. You know, it's summertime. We want easy makeup. So just using a small blending brush, going in, blending it, and then I'm gonna look it out slightly up. And this is why I didn't do my powder yet, because if I need to clean this up, I like to go in with my powder or just, you know, back within my sponge. But I like how it just goes into my bronzer because there are similar tones. Everything just feels so uniformed. And then you're gonna lose a lot while blending. So I'm gonna do a couple layers. I feel like I don't do this kind of look. Like I do, but I don't, if that makes any sense. So then going back in with Cool Bean, I'm gonna go over Copper Chic and just focus right here. Essentially using it as a liner. This eye look is not supposed to look very defined and strong. It's supposed to look sultry, a little more lived in. I'm just gonna make a tiny little one. And then going in with that same smaller brush that I did the blending, the more like the smudger one. Just gonna flick it out, just connect it like that. Mm -hmm. Before I set my under eyes, I do want to create like a little spotlight on the center. I'm going to go in with the Ulta Beauty Bouncy Eyeshadow. So this is a cream in Italian Ice. Ulta Beauty is definitely underrated. One day I will do a full line review of Ulta Beauty. Okay, see that? To me, it just made this eye look more interesting. And having those no bud shadow sticks help this because this smudges pretty easily. That's like the one negative. So for powder, I'm gonna go in with another elf product guys. I hopefully you don't mind that I'm talking about so many elf products They're just really good. This is the elf HD powder, but in luminous So not the halo glow one that one has more of a, like a tint to it where this one doesn't this is like a Translucent luminous and then like I said, I can fix that shadow blending just by using loose powder I don't think I want my cheeks too chiseled but my nose contour, just to kind of streamline it, I did a little bit of baking. Looking good. So let's finish off the right eye. I'm just gonna curl my lashes. I am going in with a new mascara. I haven't seen too many people talk about it, but I've seen marketing on TikTok. And it's really cool because I believe they use AI and it's, the one I'm referring to is the, the Maybelline, the Falsy Surreal. Surreal? surreal and the marketing is like maybe it was in new york city i'm not too sure but it's like outside um like in the traffic like you know a huge size of it just going down like dude <laughs> i thought the marketing was really fun and it made me stop and take a look obviously it convinced me enough to go buy it so we'll see how it works i ended up getting a brownish black i felt like you know just makes sense. For my liner, since I am going to be tight lining, I'm really into that. You guys know I love my L'Oreal Infallible Pro Last. These are the long wear eye pencils. They are so good. I have brown and bronze. So I'm thinking I use the brown to tight line my lash line above because I know this won't budge. There aren't too many liners that will do this. And I know some of you mentioned when I talked about this in a video, because I kind of did like a roundup and a battle between the, the drugstore brown liners. Some of you have said that this doesn't sharpen very well. And I forgot to mention in that video that that is very true. You can't get it to be too sharp. Like this is as sharp as you can get it. What I like to do is if I'm using this to create a wing, 
and I want more precision, I'll just go in with an angled brush. And to me, that's not a big deal. Because of how pigmented it is, and because it doesn't budge or smudge, to me, it's worth it. I thought there was another brown. Oh yeah, there's another brown pencil that I like. Okay. So I wanna tell you guys this. If you're new here, hi, my name is May. I'm obsessed with brown. These two are by far my favorite brown liners. The L'Oreal Infallible Perlast, right? Can't sharpen it. Your typical uh, like pencil liner, right? Is it pencil? Yeah, pencil. And then my other one, the complete opposite, is the LA Girl Ultimate Intense Stay Auto Liner. So this one is a retractable. I would say, as far as like this shade, this one is in lasting brown. They do have a darker brown if you're more into that. This is lighter. You can get a really precise point. I believe it also has a sharpener, yep has a sharpener. So if you're more into having a really sharp pencil, then I would go with this one. If you like something more retractable, I would do that. But they're both long lasting, like the longevity, smudge proof. These are both really great. And it's been a while since I've owned both of these at the same time. So it's always nice to have in my arsenal. I have the LA Girl link down below, even though I didn't use it in today's tutorial, just so it's for you guys to reference. I do want to do like my under eyes, the lower lash line. I think this is where we're going to take it a step up. I've seen a lot of people really bring their shadow down lower than what I would ever do. Like they bring it far. I don't know if I'm going to bring it that far. We'll see. But what I was thinking is I could use the L'Oreal Infallible in bronze to do that because, again, I deal with a lot of creasing under my eyes like most people do, and I just don't want this to be moving around. So typically when I add color to the lower lash line, I go about here. Again, I'm still deciding. So usually I hit right in the middle of my pupil, like right there. Now see how I didn't do, I don't know what the technical name for it is, my like skin right there, like I went on the actual lash. You could do that way. This, I would say, opened your eyes a bit more. I wanna go a little more sultry, so I'm going to actually cover that up. I just wanted to show you guys the different looks you could achieve. And then I also make sure to connect it to that little smudgy wing that I created. Now it's me deciding if I'm gonna go all the way across or just keep it like this. <sighs> I'm not too sure. Hmm, I kinda wanna go all the way across just because I never do that. I think I'm just gonna go for it. I did it, I can't go back. This is looking really good. I think I just wanna smoke out the wing just a bit more and connect it a little bit better. I'm really enjoying this look so far. I know this is more like your typical everyday makeup, but doing a few things differently than what I would usually do spices it up a bit. So the brush, I would say maybe like a mid size. Again, it's brownish black. So what I'm noticing, this is, this is a brand new mascara. This is actually not that wet, which I prefer because I can get a better curl and I'll just overall stand up better. All right, so this is one coat, not bad. I'm gonna add one more coat and see if we can add a little more volume. All right, we got more length, more volume. We could really see my lashes. Look at the difference with nothing on my eyes to this sultriness. Just to speed this video up, since I'm gonna do the same steps on this eye, I'll be right back. Looking good so far. We just have a couple more steps. I do wanna do like an inner corner highlight. I don't always do that with my makeup looks, but this shade is really pretty. I briefly said this earlier. It's the Maybelline Color Tattoo 24 Hour Eye Stick. So I'm just gonna put a little bit right here. Sometimes I go and like connect it up, do all of that. I don't think I am just because I have a lot of shadow going on and I have like that spotlight there and I want that to be more of a focus. So I'm just going to brush any of the excess powder around the nose, under the eyes, and use a little bit of powder on the neck. Some people use blush, some people just really focused on their bronzer and that's it. I think I want to add a little bit of blush. It was so hard to find at least drugstore a nudie beigey blush, like something like a flesh tone. Um, there's one that I love, but it's I guess it's not technically drugstore. It's from Persona Cosmetics in Teddy, their cream stick, my favorite product of theirs, specifically that shade. I wear that all the time. I talked about it a lot last year. So I couldn't use that. And then I was kind of like thinking what else I have. I even bought something new, but didn't end up working out. It was like the e.l.f. Luminous Putty Blush, I think in, which one is it? I can just show you guys. Here it is. I thought this could work. The packaging looked great. Like 
a muted pinky nude but when you actually swatch it it's more pink so this is closer to what the actual color is versus i looked at it from this way and looked at the packaging of it where it was more muted so this is not going to work i do like these products if you are curious to know my thoughts on that so instead i want to go in with powder this is the physician's formula butter glow press powder so if you have i think this comes in two shades a lighter and then this one is the darker i think this was intended for like an all over type of powder but i'm going to use it as blush and that's kind of how i've been using it i'm just going to like focus it right here it does have shimmer to it but i feel like it's just going to finish the look off it's a little more of a nudie beige it definitely has some more pinkness into it i think if you're more of like a mid-tone to like a deep this would be more of a nudie blush for you but i feel like i could still make it work on my skin tone i'm just not gonna apply too much so pretty and look at that for lips i'm gonna go in with the la girl perfect precision lip liner this one is in bare i love their lip pencils very easy to sharpen pigmented you leave it on its own if you just like that lip liner look i like to add a little bit of shine to it so i'm gonna go in with the lifter gloss at maybelline such a great gloss if you're looking for one that has a variety of different shades i would definitely check out this one if i'm not mistaken it doesn't have any shimmer to it yeah it doesn't this one's in amber i wonder if it's going to be too pinky maybe with this lip liner it will be now if it's a little too pink for you i would definitely check out the other shades i just wasn't too sure it, you know what it's hard to tell when you're at the store um there was another lip product that i want to use it's do i even have it on me it's this one i just don't have the right shade on me but i know it's really hard for people to find it's the the revlon super lustrous lipsticks you know the ones that are like this they're kind of sheer but buildable that were really popular towards the end of last year. If you can find the brownie one, again, I'm blanking on the name. If I can find it online, I'll have it linked down below. I would have done that one. I just know it's really hard to find, so I didn't include it in this video. Just add a little bit of setting spray. This is the Physician's Formula Better Believe It Skin Mist. And there we have it. This is my viral latte inspired makeup look. I hope you guys enjoyed. It's definitely a little outside the box for me in certain ways, as far as like the lower lash line really going in with that eyeliner just making it a little more sultry you know but still very wearable and still very easy to do so i hope you guys enjoyed this if you guys want me to do any other viral makeup looks that i'm not aware of i'm trying to like keep up with things doing a mix of things that are you know a little more trendy but then also things that i really enjoy as well but make sure to like and subscribe to this channel for more fashion and beauty content i'll see you guys in another video bye